the home run king Josh Gibson, the mighty Satchel Paige, legendary catcher Roy Campanella, black sports writers such as Wendell Smith and Joe Bostic covered the brilliant play of these and other Negro League athletes, traveling the country with teams like the Kansas City Monarchs and the Indianapolis Clowns to showcase their talents. But it was one black sports writer, the acclaimed Sam Lacey, who brought a unique perspective to his writing. As a former semi-pro pitcher for the LaDroit Tigers, he had the ability to view baseball through the lens of both a player and a writer. Lacey's career spanned over 60 years and produced thousands of columns. His hard-hitting words communicated the persistent racial discrimination in sports, journalism, and the United States in general, and helped his readers understand the need for social justice and change. In doing so, Sam Lacey not only challenged Jim Crow laws to help break the color barrier in baseball, but he also went on to become one of the many unsung heroes in the civil rights movement in the United States. Jim Crow laws were created in 1877 to continue racial segregation after the end of the Civil War. A direct result of these laws were the all-black Negro Leagues of Baseball, created in 1920. Despite the fact that Negro Leaguers were well known and lived more comfortable lives than the majority of black Americans, players still dealt with the fact that the country was segregated. Jim Crow laws forced them to stay in blacks only hotels, eat at blacks only restaurants, and drink from blacks only water fountains. Lacey himself had witnessed racism throughout his childhood. When his father and he attended a parade for the local Washington Senators, for example, Lacey recalls, standing curbside wearing an I saw Walter Johnson banner, my father had a dirty, wet towel tossed in his face by the first base coach. Pop went home and never went to another Major League Baseball game again. Having experienced blatant racism, Lacey turned to Major League Baseball to join the ranks of others attempting to push for integration. In a powerful 1945 article for the Baltimore Afro-American, for which Lacey wrote for over 60 years, Lacey described the hypocrisy of Major League Baseball owners. Baseball has given employment to known epileptics, kleptomaniacs, and a generous scattering of saints and sinners. A man totally lacking in character has been worshipped in baseball, but a man whose character may be the highest and whose ability may be Ruthian has been completely barred from the sport because he is colored. Lacey knew that Major League officials were not alone in standing in the way of baseball's integration. He called on Negro League officials themselves to promote their black players and push for desegregation. He blamed them for not standing up for their black athletes and allowing them to be ignored by the white leagues, even while many Americans pushed for racial equality after the success of black soldiers fighting in World War II. To help his cause, Lacey met with several Major League officials and owners, one of whom, Commissioner of Baseball Happy Chandler, was far more open to integrating baseball than his predecessor, Kennesaw Landis. Lacey, along with Wendell Smith and Branch Rickey, believed that black Negro League second baseman Jackie Robinson would be the best choice to become the first black player in the major leagues. Not only was he a talented athlete, but he also had the poise and ability to keep his cool under the inevitable racial taunting he would face once he reached the majors. In his Afro-American column, Lacey wrote, like no other individual, Jackie Robinson occupies the role of national benefactor, for who can dispute the assertion that the creation of tolerance and understanding will make for a stronger, united America. When in late 1945, Commissioner Chandler made the decision to allow Robinson to be signed to a major league team, Lacey knew that he, along with scores of others advocating for desegregation, had achieved their first major victory on the long road to full integration. Lacey's unrelenting years-long campaign was finally successful. Lacey fully realized the momentous turning point in civil rights history during a Dodgers game in 1948. During the playing of the national anthem, Lacey looked toward the dugout and later wrote, in each group at long last, were the men who had been selected on their merits as ball players and without regard to race, creed, or religion. Lacey knew, though, that more battles remained. In another column, Lacey stressed the blatant discrimination black players still faced. I witnessed three of the world's finest ball players riding a Jim Crow taxi cab to a colored hotel, far removed from the plush quarters of the chase because their skin is a darker hue. Eventually, 
black players were allowed in the same hotels, but as Jackie Robinson's teammate Carl Erskine recalls. We had six black players, and uh, when the Chiefs finally uh, said yes, they could stay with your team, but the dining room is off limits to the black players. They'll have to take room service. <laughs> well, what a kick in the teeth that was. Traveling with the team day after day, week after week, for season after season, had its advantages for black journalists like Lacey. When you live with somebody, it's entirely different. And when you spend time with one another, you get to know them a lot more. And you learn things about them that there's no way any white writer, any white reporter would have known. Not only did Sam Lacey assist in crossing the color line in baseball, he helped break through journalism's color line as well. For example, in an incident early in the 1947 season, Lacey was denied entry into the press box. Instead of being compliant, Lacey boosted himself on top of the press box, where he covered the entire game. To support their fellow sports writer, white journalists joined him. Lacey was, after all, respected by all his fellow journalists. Well, he was a real gentleman and uh, a good professional in his field, and uh, he was well respected. The respect of his fellow journalists and his sports writing abilities earned Lacey numerous awards and accolades. In 1948, he was one of the first black writers elected in the Baseball Writers of America Association, and he was inducted into the Journalists Division of the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1998. My presence here and the presence of Wendell Smith in 1993 should, I hope, impressed upon the American public that the Negro press has a role that should be recognized and honored. Lacey's legacy as a pioneering journalist and civil rights advocate lives on in the many figures who have followed in his footsteps. In honor of his contributions to the field of sports journalism, the annual Sam Lacey Pioneer Award was established, presented by the National Association of Black Journalists. The award is given to black individuals who are recognized as pioneers in their sport, field of work, or community. Still fighting the battles that he fought. I still want to see inclusion at all levels. I've written a series of articles of black coaches that they need to be more hired and less being fired. Those are things he challenged. Now that baseball season is starting, I'm challenging why there's not more blacks in baseball. Not just on the field, but in the dugout as managers, as coaches, or in front office. The trend in sports writing, as in all journalism, has turned digital. There's different platforms now where, you know, we could groom a, a new Sam Lacey, but he wouldn't be writing for a newspaper, he'd be writing for a website. Today, the power of Sam Lacey's spirit can be seen in online websites such as The Undefeated, which covers sports as well as social justice issues and racial equality and MLB Bro, which covers black major league players in its podcasts and displays their playing highlights on its website. During a time when much of America thought of blacks as inferior to whites, Lacey wrote provocative and hard-hitting accounts of baseball, pushing for change and equality, showing Americans that it was possible for blacks and whites to come together to attain a common goal. So significant was his contribution to the sports world that Lacey had been called the Jackie Robinson of sports journalism. Former Giants general manager Ernie Accorsi agrees. But in journalistic sense, he should be remembered like Jackie Robinson's remembered. It took a tremendous amount of courage to take the stands that he took. And not only did he take those stands, but he established so much credibility and respect across racial lines. I think he transcended sports. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Jackie Robinson made my success possible. Without him, I would never have been able to do what I did. And it was journalists such as Sam Lacey who made Jackie Robinson possible. Through his unrelenting campaign to integrate baseball, through his ability to communicate the humility, humanity, and dignity of these black athletes to his audience, Lacey helped open doors to everyone. Baseball, the all-American sport, delivered this message to a country on the brink of change. Lacey continued to write for the Baltimore Afro-American until his death at the age of 99. His last article was written longhand on his hospital bed in 2003, proof that this hero of the civil rights movement never gave up the fight.